Hi, this is Regeline Sabai, also known as Gigi, and you're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Paula Jausch. Paula is a trauma survivor, speaker, and author. Welcome to the show, Paula. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Such an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us more about you and where are you from? Currently living in Michigan, but I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I always love it when people say, welcome, speak an speaker, author, because that wasn't always my story. But I'm really excited to share with you tonight uh, my testimony and all that I've been through and how I came out. I love it. Now, talk to us a little bit more about your book, Cross Addicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So this, actually, this book was written out of my journey of healing. I mean, it took me five years to write this book, but what I wanted to offer, I wanted to strategically offer what I needed in my time of healing, because I think trauma, um, childhood trauma is so complicated and it's so confusing. And I don't think there's like a one way to heal, but I think there's so many people that saying, how can I heal from this? How do I get over this? And I think the most confusing thing, Gigi, is a lot of people don't want to do the work. They don't want to look at the trauma for their past. They don't want to admit that this happened to me and it was that bad. So cross addicted actually in the um, people who struggle with addiction and numerous addictions, cross addicted is the name for somebody who has multiple addictions. And so I got that title. It's kind of like a twofold meaning, meaning cross addicted, multiple addictions to take you to a addicted to the cross of Christ, which my faith plays a huge role in um, my healing process. I love it. And so now when you talk about your faith playing a huge role in your healing process, talk to us a little bit more about your relationship with God and how others can begin to have a relationship with him as well. Okay. For me, it was distorted for a long time because I viewed God as always mad at me and that he doesn't love me. And I'm never going to be able to be accepted by God because it was a reflection of the environment that I grew up in, a lot of abuse, a lot of rejection, and a lot of abandonment. There's a chapter in my book, and it's called, I believe it's called The Father's Love, but I had to write and explain in that chapter, it took healing from my father wounds to actually to be able to receive the father's love to make me understand that I was loved and accepted by him. But I mean, it's easier said than done because it's not something that you just snap your fingers and it's all done. It's part of the process. It's part of the process of healing those wounds in your heart, letting down that wall and just letting God get in there and start to heal those things that are wounding us, you know? Amen. Let go and let God. Now you are also an eating disorder survivor what would you tell someone else who's going through that situation right now? Mm-hmm. It's never about the food. <laughs> I was so, there was such a mind obsession of constantly, like there's something wrong with me. I don't know how to eat. There's something wrong with my body. And I believe that when we have wounds in our heart or we have unhealed trauma, the food is just a symptom. Whether we're overeating or whether we're under eating, just realize that food is some just a symptom and there's an underlying issue that needs more of your attention than the food. And um, it's more of a control thing with women with eating disorder than even men. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of men that struggle with eating disorders. And so I would encourage you to find out what the underlining issue is, the deeper rooted issue, because it has nothing to do with food. It's more fear-based. It's more control that leads to the battle that's here in the mind. I love it. Now, you are also a trauma survivor. And recently I launched the book, Overcoming Heart Blocks, Inspiring Stories for Healing from Trauma with many other incredible authors. And so let's talk about trauma for a moment. What does trauma mean to you. Okay. Um, do you, as in like, why do I call myself a trauma survivor? Correct. Yes. Okay. So both my parents struggled with addiction and my father was an alcoholic and drug addict, but he was a raging alcoholic. There was a lot of physical abuse, emotional abuse, father in and out of prison, but with my parents being absent in the home because of their addiction, you know, there was rejection, there was abandonment, there was always a lack of food, which I believe played another huge part in my eating disorder, because it's like that fear of there's never going to be enough. But what happened to me is that 
in middle school, you know, somebody offered me the drugs and alcohol at age 13. And I just realized that, oh, if, if I use this drugs and alcohol, I can actually go home and face what's happening in my life with my parents being absent, you know? And my father ended up going to prison and the situation that he went to prison for, it was all over the news. But the d disturbing part here, Gigi, is that I started getting placed in like behavior classes, special ed classes, like misdiagnosed. Nobody ever sat me down and said, what's going on at home? Or maybe this could be trauma. Like trauma wasn't really talked about like it is today. Like I feel like it's starting to be talked about a lot more. And so I got, even started getting placed in special education classes. And so when I was an adult woman trying to get a job, you know, after getting out of school, when I went to go apply for a job and they're like, ma'am, do you even know how to read and write? And I was a, like literally reading at a third grade level, illiterate to some point where there was a lot of words that I couldn't read, but I did not realize that I had so much childhood trauma, PTSD, that my brain was actually just shut down from life in general. That's the only way I knew how to survive. So my definition of trauma is you're surviving. You have no clue what happened to you because you haven't even tapped into that childhood stuff, but you're just surviving. That's absolutely correct. That's absolutely mm -hmm. correct. And your story is truly inspiring. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, tell us a little bit more about your podcast, the pretty podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, um, one day I just felt it dropped in my spirit, the pretty podcast. And I held on to that name. And one day I was laying in bed and I just kind of felt a nudge for God to get up and go write this down. So pretty stands for where we face our pain, our pain, our rejection, our experiences that led to trauma and let it be a training ground to find yourself. And that acronym, acronym actually means exactly my story is that I had to take my pain, my rejection, my experiences and my trauma and let it be a training ground to find actually who I am what tried to be um, stolen from me when I was a child. And so now in this podcast, it's just, I'm on a mission to create resources for those who've been affected by trauma and addiction. I love it. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? To never give up. You know what saddens me is that people reach out for help and then five years later, they reach out for help again. And, and I saw this, um, graphic on social media the other day. And it was like a picture of the stairs and somebody, it was like somebody sitting on the first step. And then a year later, they're still sitting on the first step. I would encourage you like to take three steps. And if you have to go or take one step, and if you have to go back three, just keep taking those steps. And that's what we don't do is a lot of times as trauma survivors or people that need help and healing, we just stay stuck and we stay fragmented. And then we are like holding on to the old mindset. I'm going to be this way for the rest of my life. Like, woe was me. But that's not true. Like there's a purpose and plan for every single one of our lives. And our past and our pain doesn't have to define us. Actually, it, it can make us and who we're supposed to be. I love it. Our past does not define us. Very powerful, Paula. And thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Now, where can the audience find you? Instagram, that's my jam. I, I love Instagram, but on my website, paulajosh.com. Um, some of my resources is my book, Cross Addicted, um, Breaking Free from Family Trauma and Addiction. And that's on Amazon. And so I'm most active on Instagram and Facebook the pretty podcast. I have my book, but if you also have the U version Bible app, I have a free devotion on there too. letting go of family trauma and addiction. I love that. Can you repeat that one more time for the audience, the Bible? Yes. App? The U version Bible app and it's Y-O-U version Bible app and it's free to download. And if you just type in my name, Paula Josh, there's this devotion, letting go of family trauma and addiction. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check it out and also to check out Paula on all of her social media platforms and her website, paulajouch.com. That's P-A-U-L-A-J-A-U-C-H.com. And Paula, thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. You have a blessed day. Thank you for having me.